Welcome back everyone, Energy Fabricator here. Today I just want to show you my 12 volt power supply and control panel for the longitudinal device and for the Don Smith replica that I'm currently building. Uh, over here we've got the 12 volt input terminals which are the banana plugs here. That goes straight through to this on and off switch which is an old school ceramic thing. Um, that feeds into the high frequency pulse width modulator here which allows us to control the current going into the circuit. Uh, the output of that PWM goes straight into an inverter which is here mounted underneath and the output of this inverter goes into an EMI filter which is mounted on the back side which you can't see at the moment. Um, the output of that EMI filter goes through to these two switches here which allow us a constant on or constant off output and the option of a pulsed, manually pulsed uh, output. Uh, it also goes through this variac here to allow us to control the voltage on the output terminals. The output terminals are here and we also have a standard uh, 240 volt uh, wall plug on the output mounted on the side as well. So starting at the base, you can see these feet here which I have salvaged from an old amplifier. The base is a piece of old switchboard panelling and I've mounted all the controls on this piece of 3mm aluminium which I've folded and mounted to the switchboard panel. Here's a close up of the banana plug input terminals for the 12 volt input which goes through the old school on and off switch which feeds through to the PWM. That's a close-up of the PWM which allows us to control the current into the circuit. It is currently fused at 10 amps but we can definitely pop that down. It's a stock fuse at 10 amps. I'll actually be uh, trying to replace that with a 5 amp and we'll keep going down until it blows so that we know roughly what the maximum load is including uh, surge startup currents. This is the inverter that the PWM feeds into which is a standard cheapo modified sine wave inverter which gives a, an output of approximately 200-250 watts at the most. Um, it is pretty cheap so I doubt it would even go that high. But anyway at the back of that unit if we can sit that down there carefully you can see here that I have actually fused the output um, so that we can again just like on the DC side on the AC side we can just keep dropping the fuse down until we know what the maximum output uh, draw is on this system. Um, again as I said to you before that feeds through to the EMI filter which you can see there and from there we go into our variac which gives us adjustability on the voltage and then out to the switches We've got the on and off switch here and the novelty push for credit button uh, which I got from an old pinball machine for our momentary pulsing outputs here and also the standard output plug there at the moment I've got the 240 volt, 12,000 volt neon sign transformer which is here connected to the output and that is actually running a load which you probably can't see, oh there you go I'm just running this neon light so just a standard circuit at the moment, no longitudinal or Don Smith stuff just testing this main power supply and control panel. As I said to you, this power supply runs off 12 volts uh, but instead of running it off a 12 volt battery I've decided to use a mains powered 12 volt LED power supply. Uh, so the one I've got connected at the moment is a 12 volt 2.5 amp LED power supply so that gives us a total of 30 watts of power. Um, we don't need that much so I do have a 20 watt power supply coming and I will be mounting that permanently in here as our permanent 12 volt source 
but we will be able to unplug that from these inputs and just run a battery if we want to go mobile with this unit which I will be doing because I have a pretty good expanse of lakes and ponds across the road from my house so once we get this longitudinal thing going we'll be doing some tests through the water of transmission of energy um, yeah so at the moment we're drawing about 50 milliamps from the wall at 240 volts just to keep this power supply on standby and with the load of the 12,000 volt transformer and the 500 millimeter long neon globe uh, it increases the um, the consumption from the wall to about 100 milliamps, 110 milliamps at the most um, yeah that's about it so now this multimeter here is connected to the input terminals so that we can have a look at the voltage and make sure there's not much of a fluctuation in voltage during the full operating range of the circuit and this multimeter here is connected to the output which allows us to see how much voltage we are pumping into our 12,000 volt neon sign transformer so we'll turn it on now oh, actually we'll turn the current right down and we'll turn the voltage down we'll flip the switch and turn the voltage up about a quarter of the way and then we'll just start increasing the current might want to just turn that on you can't see it now but the load is actually flickering and there's no point in me even trying to show it to you because it's just going to look like a big red glow and um, you won't even be able to see the standing waves that I'm able to create in the neon globe as well unfortunately because of the re refresh rate of the camera and the frequency of the standing wave in the in the globe so as you can see this blue line can go all the way around to the other side I haven't even got it up to a quarter of the way the voltage on the variac is only a quarter of the way and we've only got we've already got 95 volts if I wanted to increase the voltage at around about halfway we're already up to about 150 volts we can dial it right up to about 240 volts which is the mains power which is what the neon sign transformer requires uh, if I turn that down a little bit in the current input we can take that up all the way up oh, that's already up to 3 we'll drop that down a bit oh, it's cut out not enough current So we're already up to about 240, 280 volts, there you go, nearly 300 volts, so we're already overclocking this thing and putting more voltage into this transformer than what it was built for. Now I can do this, the, the, the same thing the other way around by using low voltage and high current and get the same result by increasing the current, the voltage goes up. So it depends which way you want to do it. You can have a high current input and low voltage or low current and high voltage. Achieving the same voltage output, obviously the waveform is going to look slightly different but we're only concerned about the voltage going into the neon sign transformer for this application. Um, it is capable of going up to about 400, 500 volts roughly but I'm not willing to do that with this transformer because I don't want to blow it up before I do some longitudinal tests. I really wish I could show you the standing waves in the neon tube because they do look pretty funky uh, but it just I have no way of capturing that for you so too bad. Um, so yeah it's a pretty cool little power supply it works well uh, we, as I said we've got fuses on the input and output so even if we weren't sure which we can be pretty sure because we've got a constant, constant voltage and we can well we will be able to take current measurements as soon as I put a current loop on that so we can put a clamp meter on it 
um, we'll be able to take a voltage measurement across the outputs here and we'll also be able to get a maximum output on current by the fuses and we'll also put a little current loop uh, on the other side there so that we can measure the current in AC as well so there you go so we will be able to measure input and output on this power supply so that we can take accurate, accurate measurements during our experiments so let's turn this down flick it off and there we go now I also wanted to show you what I'm calling my high voltage capacitor starter kit so these are 4.7 picofarad 10 kV caps so I've got 10 of those uh, I also have 10 similar capacitors um, these are 12 picofarad 10 kV I also have two of these which are 3300 picofarad 10 kV and I also have two of these doorknob caps which are 470 picofarad 10 kV so there's two of those and then we got to the 11,000 volt range and I have one of these which you've seen before this is my Don Smith CMR 1A cap uh, so that's 0 0.01 microfarad 11 kV and then we got to the 15 kV where I have six of these 2200 picofarad 15 kV DC caps so six of those and I have ten of these which are 1000 picofarad 30 kV caps it's ten of them and then I think we're heading to the 50 kV range and I have two of these doorknob caps uh, 560 picofarad at 50 kV and then I've got a couple of these 470 picofarad 55 kVs uh, they're encapsulated in some sort of silicon they look pretty funky I also have these two capacitor banks here um, each capacitor is rated to 0 0.05 microfarad at 8 kV giving us a total of 0.15 microfarad at 8 kV on each bank uh, they're just mounted to a piece of ceramic bakelite um, all I've done is just rounded off the top corners there as you can see drilled some holes in it bolted them straight on uh, and smoothed up all the edges so there you go uh, still have to wire them up uh, but we'll do that later they're right to go and the last thing I wanted to show you was this here you might recall last time I showed you these neon electrodeless bulbs here that Carl made for me to show that we can light them without in internal electrodes um, they're red lights um, I'm only just using red lights here to prove that we can just light up something that would require a lot of power using conventional uh, circuits neon circuits um, but I'm not running a brothel I don't have any practical use for red lights so what I've done is I've got Carl to make me four exactly the same except these are eight millimeter in diameter only because we couldn't get the six mil uh, in the white and that's it these are white neon electrodeless bulbs um, so these are more practical because we could potentially use them for lighting applications and if it works well I might even get a spiral version made uh, but that's that's um, that's where I'm at we've got four white ones and four red ones we'll try and light them all up together so now you're pretty much up to speed with what's going on um, the only thing I fail to mention on this power supply is that when the input power is switched on a 12 volt light is built into this side of the circuit um, so 
inside that switch there is a 12 volt light that turns on as an indicator of input power. Um, and the other thing that I'm still going to do is to add these three uh, LEDs here encased in silicon um, under let me zoom that out for you again there we go I want to mount these under the PCB here and I'll wire them to a switch because some of the experiments that we're going to be doing are going to be done in the dark or at night time and it's always handy to have some sort of dull lighting around your main power switch um, and I found that that is necessary in the past because you never know when you're going to need to turn your circuit off very quickly um, that's about all I have for you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, leave comments.